to White Island. Uh, we were going to go to the beach at White Island and anchor right beside it. Um, there's a pretty bad storm down that way so we decided to stop right here at uh, Windward on Caracou. There's a shipyard called uh, Joan Pierre Shipyard. They make wooden boats. The Scottish settled here. Maybe we can see some of that. Explore this little area and then move down there when the storm passes to White Island. Not long after dropping the dinghy, we lost the navigation light that sits on top of our motor. You got it. How did that happen? The current pulling the dinghy. Forward. Back up under the boat. Let's get this float. Yeah, but it's broke. This could do my idea where you can put Velcro on it. I said Velcro too. Yeah. I'm sorry. Light still working? Good. Daniel just said he has a headache. What you don't see is we just ate fish that had been given to us about an hour ago. After eating it, my skin started burning and turning red, and I felt like I was going to pass out. A search online found that when certain types of fish are not properly refrigerated, histamines are formed. Histamines are heat resistant, so illness can occur even with fish that is properly cooked. It's been about 30 minutes, maybe 45 minutes, since we've taken Benadryl or any kind of medicine after we've eaten this fish, and we feel way better. I'm not as red as I was. Um, I don't have a headache. I don't feel like I'm about to pass out. So I think I think we're on the mend. We're gonna go look at this shipwreck. Where are we going, Dan? Uh, out here to the shipwreck in this reef. We started our trek back down to the southern end of Grenada. We got off to a rough and rocky start. This getaway was fun, but we have a haul out day quickly approaching and we need to get back down closer to Woburn Bay and Clark's Court Marina. Our projects still aren't over yet. We make an overnight stop at Rond Island, which is also part of the Grenada Islands.
Can you see it? Yeah, it's good. Okay, good. The only thing is, we're drifting back kind of a weird way now. First off, we anchored over there. It's a pretty big anchorage here, but uh, after we kind of swam around a little bit, I dove the anchor just to check, you know, before it got dark. And it was hung on a rock. We didn't have a really good hold, so we pulled up and tried to drop it a couple more times over there in some sand. But there's some sand over like real thin layer of sand over rocks, so it just drags until it catches a rock. And then, so we dove it a couple more times when we caught over there. Same thing, hung on a rock. So we moved over here as we looked on satellite imaging and saw some sand. Dropped it over here one time and didn't didn't catch. This time it caught. We just dove it and it looks good. So. Gotta hook the bridle up now, might let a little more chain out. We're running this a lot, like on the steeper, you know, mountainous islands in the Bahamas is all sand pretty much, and you can get a good hold about anywhere. But once you start hitting these uh, volcanic islands, mountainous islands, it's, there's a lot of rock and not a lot of sand. Even if there is sand, it's not deep enough. It's just a thin layer and it kind of just drags on top of the rock and sand. So kind of frustrating, but it's, Pretty common, yeah, pretty it's common. pretty common. The snorkeling around the Anchorage was really neat. Lots of big drop-offs and rocks in crystal clear water. What's in the bag, Dan? What's in the bag? Daniel was on the hunt for lobster, but didn't have any luck. Did you catch any lobsters? Well, the door has open. No? It's closed. Oh, big storm All right, go ahead and get that. This is the peach right here. No lobster, but I got this seashell. Rond Island was fun, but we've got to get to Clark's Court Marina for haul out. The main reason for needing to haul out was for our standing rigging. It's easier to make sure the hulls remain level when on the hard versus in the water when replacing the crossbeam cable that runs across the front of the boat. After getting hauled out of the water with the travel lift, the boat is then put on a trailer pulled behind a tractor to maneuver it around the boat yard. We lived on the boat during the haul out. We hope to be on the hard for only about a week. Oh my goodness. Made it. Made it. We made it. Jack, open all the windows for me, babe. No, I don't have to with my lenses. No, you don't, do you? You just gotta worry about falling off. It's been a long time since we've been on the hard. While adding a coat of wax isn't at the top of our priority list, it's something the kids and I can do in the downtime. Get wax in your hair, Jim. We keep the kids busy by giving them tasks they can do on their own, like hauling off the trash to the dumpster and scrubbing the boat. And they're still working on their schoolwork, usually first thing in the morning. How many that Throw them down. Spot. My heart looks shiny now. 
think it looks different than when it did. Yeah. Look at that, now look at this. Well, that's wax right there, that dull spot. Is that what you're pointing to? Yeah. Can you tell the difference, Dan? Yeah. Can you really just say that? I don't know. Daniel's about to do an acid wash, which will get rid of all the rust, crud, and grime off the bottom side of the boat. Dan, that does not look safe. You trust that weld right there? I do. We'll do the on a boat. We used MSB rigging to replace all of our standing rigging. We would highly recommend them if you need work done in Grenada. They were professional, quick to respond, and competent. We would definitely use them again. Hauling out also gives us a chance to re-glue and reseal our emergency hatches, which were already starting to leak. These hatches were recalled in the past after some incidences where boats sank because their windows fell out, leaving a huge hole so close to the water line. The recall fix was to add metal brackets to the outside of the windows, which we do have. So when the glue that's holding your window in fails, you at least have the metal pieces there that prevents you from completely losing the window. Huh? Don't let that thing fall on my head now. Alright, stop pushing, brother. They're gonna let her murder me and get away with it. Uh, oops, the window fell on her. <laughs> hey, boy. You gonna push on it? Gigi, 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 come here. No, no, no. You can see where our salon windows were in serious need of rebedding. It lifts up completely from the frame of the boat. We used Camillo Creed water and he agreed to recalk around the boat, rebed and caulk all the salon windows and reseal our emergency hatches. He was great as well and we would definitely recommend him. Yeah, I was helping the composite guys. I don't know how to set it for where it won't move. We're basically putting a strap around the two holes to keep them level because when they take that cross beam cable out, the cross beam as well is disconnected the same place. So they have to disconnect pretty much everything that's supporting the front two holes and hold them true and level. So they got to strap, strap around the whole thing to keep it level. I think take it loose, put the new cable in, and put it back down. I'm taking out that big old beam that goes across.
We had a bottom job completed in April, six months ago from our current haul out. So we decided to just touch up our sail drives and on the front and back of the hulls where the paint was starting to wear thin. And he comes back up during the day. Yeah. Mickey. Watching how they maneuver boats throughout this boat yard was quite the sight to see. All the boats are packed in so tightly. We were able to get a splash date quickly and on the weekend because the boat behind us was needing to be moved out. After splashing, we moved to the Woburn Anchorage outside of Clark's Court Marina. Daniel didn't waste any time finding another thing to fix on machete. I'm replacing steering cable chain, which is all rusted. I'm going to replace it with this new stainless chain. I couldn't find any master links, so I'm going to use these shackles. Just a pain to get to and everything's so rusted because it's not stainless chain to begin with. It's hard to get the master links off. Especially working through this little hole that the chart plotter's in. So I just got this old um, chain for the steering out. And basically, I don't know why Lagoon didn't make this a stainless uh, roller chain. But you can see how rusted it is and how like it's just all kinked up and just rusted to where it don't roll like it's supposed to over this pocket so it was kind of making some noise and binding up and i was worried it's gonna break or just get seized to where we couldn't steer we'd still be able to steer with the autopilot um but if it got seized up it may cause issues but if it broke we could still steer with the autopilot but it's been hard finding this roller chain anywhere down in the islands um Finally found it at Palm Tree Marine down here in Grenada. They had some stainless roller chain. They didn't have the master links to go on the end, so I had to go to a chandlery and find some shackles that the pins would fit through the rollers. So I'm going to put it back in. I tied it up. I tied the steering cables up with this rope so they didn't fall back down in there because I had to work in the hole where the chart plotter was. So I got those tied up with the rope for right now once I took the old chain off the sprocket to I'm on, put it back in now put some Loctite on these shackles and maybe zip ties too and make sure everything works good that will be good to go